um, presentation that is usually used for um, investors and so on, but I will uh, try to make it more, uh, let's say, insightful. Uh, but I will use it as like kind of visual uh, media. So you're the know, visual media. And so one thing that uh, I would like you to remember uh, at the end of this uh, presentation is the concept of social 3.0. So um, the new current protocol is the, is the blockchain uh, arm, let's say, of, uh, of the, our startup. Uh, to give you a bit of, uh, of background, so I come from different aspects of the creative economy, but the last one, the one where I spent 10 years as a publisher that was extremely interesting, for me was uh, fashion. And there is actually a pattern between fashion and all the other forms of innovation where there is a magical uh, thing happening when there is a consensus between creators uh, that builds a trend. Because fashion, like anything else, and I can take parallel of AI or blockchain, all those concepts are, are constructs. They are not necessarily um, valid by essence, they have been built by uh, communities of people who kind of agree around some standards. So they form new jargon, new business models, new uh, concepts, and then they start building on top of those concepts. And so fashion kind of has this thing, but in a very primitive and visual way, meaning that without realizing it, you walk in the street, you see people passing, you see the way they dress, it gets somewhere inside your brain, and all of our brains are forming a graph, a giant graph that uh, stores all these data about, let's say, memories of, of visual cues that we get by associating outfits with ideas, with uh, you know codes and so on. And, and every country, every city has their own codes. Every community. Um, I'm always smiling when I hear you know people saying I don't care about fashion uh, because by saying that you actually care, but also because Look at any, you know, I don't know, developers, for example, are the, the main ones who say that they don't care about fashion. And then you look at them, they have the same open source Docker t-shirts, and they have those stickers on their laptops, and they, they, they have a certain uh, expectation of how a, a developer should look like. They, they may have sometimes a ponytail or a beard and certain shapes of glasses and so on. So, so we are kind of all trapped into this like visual uh, exchange and um, and so the same happens in, in everything, and blockchain is, a, is again a beautiful example. And so uh, when people come together and create a new technology, then they start to create new uh, models, new, uh, new constructs. So for example, if you look at the internet, all those concepts are kind of made up while people are building and they kind of get to a consensus. Same for like DeFi. DeFi is quite interesting because it has at some, at the same time, something that's like short, simple, but it also has the word, you know, defiance or uh, in French we say defi, uh, which is to, to kind of rebel or to kind of uh, threaten or a challenge, let's say, a power in place. So um, sometimes those things happen because there is uh, a number of reasons that are not really structural and it's just, you know, brands and concepts. And so what we have been working on at Life is trying to solve a major problem, which is that the the real creators, and so I would I would include everyone here in the in the uh, in this room, um, the real creators are ghosted by social media. So social media has defined a law of gravity where everything, their privacy, everything is around attention and clicks and, um, and ads. And so that's, that's, that's their, the reason why they, 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 they do anything is how their main primitive is how do we get people to click more, to spend more time on screen and so on. Um, and as I said earlier, it, it doesn't have to be the only way. Um, those metrics, those traction metrics based on retention and screen time and all those things are, again, arbitrary. They, they, it could have been something else. So um, 
what we, what we have been working on is trying to define how we could value, creative value in a way that is not based on the amount of views or the amount of likes or this kind of, this kind of metrics. And the, the, the problem is very big. We believe that it's potentially trillions that are locked, that are hidden by those uh, social networks that prevent us from seeing the unseen behind the TikTokers and behind their equivalent because uh, I blame a bit TikTok but actually on Twitter is the same, on Facebook is the same, the posts that are the most controversial or shocking or whatever, and it kind of creates a sometimes unconscious, you know, um, uh, behavior, the development of, of cognition mechanisms that push people towards that and creating the content that kind of radicalize people and take them into the extremes. Um, and, and, and all 